I went to the florist a month or so ago to buy some flowers to paint and she had some pretty leucodendrons for sale. I bought a couple of them and I did a painting. In this video I'll show you how I painted parts of the flower and I'll talk a bit about how I chose the colours that I used. If you haven't seen these flowers before, they are native to South Africa and we grow them here in Australia as well. They really caught my eye when I saw them. If you've been watching my videos, you'll know that I try to limit the amount of colours that I use. So for this painting, I chose a triadic colour scheme of red, yellow and blue. Just three colours with yellow being the dominant colour. I decided to use a cool yellow, a warm blue and a cool red. I chose Windsor Lemon as my yellow because I'm familiar with it and I use it a lot. But I knew it would be too bright if I used it straight out of the tube, so I mixed the blue and the red into it to make a more earthy looking yellow. You'll see me do that in this video. I also needed a green for the leaves. I wanted a vibrant but natural looking green. In my video from a few weeks ago, I talked about how it's important to know what temperature your colours are when you mix them. I'll link to that video in the description if you haven't seen it. When I mix uh, green, I know that two cool colours are going to make a really vibrant, almost artificial looking green. I didn't want that for this painting. The yellow I had chosen was cool, so instead of choosing a cool blue, I chose a warm blue, French ultramarine. When I mixed the cool yellow with the warm blue, I got a bright, pretty green that didn't look artificial. You'll also see me do that soon. The bracts have got little pink tips and edges, so I chose permanent rose for that because the colour of them looked like permanent rose to me. And that was it. They were the only three colours that I needed. And having only three colours made the task of mixing really simple. In this video, you'll see me mix the colours that I need. You'll see me paint the background splash in and you'll see how I make use of lost edges to help create depth. There's lots to show you, but before I do, I must thank Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning platform that is filled with thousands of classes for creative people like you. It's a place where you can get inspired and learn new skills. I've been working with Skillshare since 2015 and I've published quite a few watercolour classes with them. If you want to improve your drawing skills, I recommend this class by Gabrielle Bricky called Learn to Draw Daily Practices to Improve Your Drawing Skills. In this class, Gabrielle walks you through some fundamental skills you need to help you improve your drawing. You'll learn some measuring tips, you'll learn how to see your subject as basic shapes, and you'll learn how to use negative space to help you see what you're drawing. The importance of knowing how to draw can't be emphasised enough, particularly if you paint in watercolour, because we can't paint over our mistakes. There's lots of drawing classes on Skillshare. In fact, there are not only classes on drawing and painting, there are classes on how to be more productive, how to market your business. There are even classes on how to do yoga. There are no annoying ads and new premium classes are launched each week, so there's always something new to learn. If you'd like to explore the site, the first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So if you haven't used Skillshare before, make use of it and start learning some new skills. Okay, let's have a look at the painting now. The paper I used was Arsh Cold Press 300 pound. I took a full sheet and I cut it into quarters. Before I started, I needed to mix the colours together to make the main colour of the bracts. The main colour was going to be Windsor Lemon, so I started with that. That was way too bright, so I mixed a tiny bit of the French Ultramarine into it. Now, of course, blue and yellow is going to make a green, so I only use a tiny little bit because I don't want a green. I also mixed a small amount of permanent rose into the mixture. 
So I've used all three colours, but the main colour is Windsor Lemon. Now I've put a bit too much of the permanent rose in, so I pick up a bit more of the lemon and a little bit more of the blue as well. I want a sort of a mustard colour, I think that's what I was looking for. Just a soft muted yellow. So you can see I'm only putting the corner of the brush into those other colours. Then when I was happy with it, I mixed a bit of water into it. I needed the paint to flow on the paper, so I didn't want it to be too thick. I tried it out on a bit of scrap paper just to make sure it was going to work and I was happy with that. I also needed a green, so I mixed my Windsor Lemon with French Ultramarine to make the green. I add the blue sparingly, just so that I don't make a mixture that's too dark just yet. And then I add some water to it. I think I might put a touch more of the French Ultramarine into that. I had masked off the little yellow areas on the cone in the middle with some masking fluid and then when that was dry I painted some clean water all over my paper. I wanted to paint a background splash of colour behind the flower and I'll use the colours I mixed for the flower to do that. While it was wet, I got the yellow mixture and I started to paint that on. I painted it on the flower as well and then onto the background. I kept an eye on the areas that I wanted to keep white so I didn't put any paint on those areas. I'm painting flat on my table here but when I get the paint where I want it, I tilt the board off the table so that the paint flows up towards the top edge of the paper. And then I did the same thing with the green mixture. I painted that onto the wet paper where the leaves were. And then again I tilted my board up towards the top edge again so the paint flowed up there. I'm painting over the leaves as well as the background. It's really loosely. You can see how I'm holding my brush back away from the ferrule. And I give it a little tilt just to make the paint flow a bit more. If there's not enough there, I put a bit more on. And then it spreads a bit further. And that'll give me a soft blush of colour behind the flower, which helps to add interest to the painting. It also allows me to include lost edges on my leaves and on the flower as well. Some of the green paint drifted onto those areas that I wanted to remain white. So I got some paper towel then and I dabbed at it and that removed it. The background splash dried and then it was time to start painting in the flower. I did that on wet paper mostly. Here I'm wetting the back bracket with some water. I took it down to the cone in the middle. On this bracket here you can see I've left a broken pencil line on either side. I'm hoping to leave some lost edges there. Here's the colour I mixed at the start, so I'll mix a little bit more French Ultramarine in it just to darken it slightly. I painted that colour onto the wet paper. So it's just slightly darker than the background colour. It's very subtle. I've kept the paint away from my lost edges. Now I'm painting in the tip. So now I take the paint out of my brush. I just use it slightly damp. There's no paint on it. And I feather that paint down a bit more. 
So you can see the colour that's on the petal fades into the background there, giving me those lost edges on either side. Then I get a bit of permanent rose, a fair amount of pigment, not a lot of water in the mixture. I'll use my little zero brush to pick the paint up. And while that's wet, I paint that on the tip. It bleeds down over the wet paper. And I painted each Brecht the same way that I did this one. There's enough paint there on the paper, so I've taken the paint out of my brush and I'll use it to feather that paint down a bit just so it's not all accumulating in the one spot. I painted in some more petals on the right there now I'm painting in the cone in the middle. I'm using the green that I mixed at the start that I used on the background. That was French ultramarine mixed with Windsor lemon. And I paint this in on the dry paper over the top of all that masking fluid that I've got there. While I waited for that to dry, I re-wet this section here on the petal at the back with some water. I mixed a bit more of the French ultramarine into my yellow mixture. And I painted that colour just here on the side. I removed the masking fluid from the centre cone and I painted all these little yellow bits in with Windsor Lemon. And then I dried them all off with the hairdryer. When they were dry, I got a bit more of the green mixture and I painted that onto the right hand side over the top of the yellow bits as well to put them into shadow. When that dried, I mixed more French ultramarine into my green mixture to deepen the colour and I started to paint on some darker areas on this cone shape in the middle on the dry paper. Where I wanted soft edges, I got my other brush, my number five, and I softened the edge before it dried. And then I used the green again to paint little shadows on the left hand side and the bottom edges of those little yellow parts. I need a darker green now for the leaves. I'll use Windsor Lemon and French Ultramarine again, but I'll use more of the blue, less of the yellow. That's the French ultramarine. You can see that gives me a much darker, richer green. I painted that colour on this area here on dry paper. I wanted this colour to be quite dark against the flower to add some contrast. It's a beautiful forest green colour. I painted it on this side as well. Here I'm painting a little bit of water. This is the bottom section of that leaf on the left. Here I've got the green but it's got more of the Windsor lemon mixed into it. I soften the edge here where it meets the stem. I don't need a hard edge there. And then I get more of the darker green mixture with more of the French ultramarine in it. This leaf over here has got a lost edge on the right hand side. So I'm going to try and keep the paint away from that edge. I've just wet it with water. Then I run my green paint down, but I'll keep it on the left hand side of the leaf. I'll try to keep it away from that right edge. Down the bottom, I take the paint over to my pencil line. I 
Okay, then I take my damp brush and I take a bit of paint off just near the lost edge. And while it's damp, I paint some permanent rows down that front edge. Not every edge has to be clearly defined. It's much more interesting to have a variety of different edges throughout your painting. I've done the same thing with this leaf here. I've kept the paint away from that lost edge on the left hand side. Now I'm running permanent rows down the front of it. I've also faded the colour away a bit here. My green isn't as dark as it is up higher. As I move my way down the stem, I want the leaves to be quite pale. This leaf here has had a paler wash of green painted on it. And now I've got some darker green, so it's got more of the French ultramarine mixed into it. The right hand side of the leaf is in shadow. I painted that on wet paper to keep all the paint edges soft. And then I got some permanent rows as well and I ran that along the top of it and down the sides a little way. And the paint bleeds over the wet paper. Because this side was in shadow, I picked up a bit of French Ultramarine on my brush and I dropped that on the right hand side there. This bract just here at the front could be a bit darker. I need to deepen the colour on it. To do that, I'll go back to my original mixture, which was Windsor Lemon with a tiny bit of French Ultramarine and a tiny bit of Permanent Rose. I want the paint to be a bit thicker than it was when I painted in the original wash on the leaf. So I won't mix as much water into it. And again, I want soft paint edges on the marks that I make, so I'll work on the wet paper. I want the paint to bleed over the paper. I take the water to the edges of the bract so that I don't get any unwanted water lines forming. And then I use that mixture and I paint that onto the wet paper. Hopefully that will be dark enough now when it dries. It's not a huge contrast, but it just needed to be a little bit darker than the way I had it. I also wet this area here where I'm painting now with some water and I use that colour there as well just to deepen the shadow down in there. At this stage of the painting, I look for areas where I can increase the value, to add more contrast. I switched to my larger brush once I got away from the cone in the middle. And then when I had enough paint on the paper, I took the paint out of my brush and feathered away that top edge. I wet this bract here as well and I deepened the colour there too. And there was a cast shadow on the one in front, this one on the right hand side of that one. So I painted that there too. I did that on dry paper because the cast shadow had hard edges. I was quite happy with it then. But then I thought I could improve it by painting a glaze of French ultramarine onto these leaves at the back here that are tucked in underneath the flower. Again, I'm trying to add more contrast around the flower. The flower is the focal point and that's where I want my darkest colours. So this is French ultramarine being glazed over the leaf on dry paper. I also felt that the French ultramarine here would really help to make the yellow of the flower pop. I stood back and looked at it and I could see that the blue finished abruptly. 
So I decided to take a bit of it underneath that leaf as well. And then I feathered it away. I left it to dry overnight and I thought I'd come back in the morning and have a look at it and see if I'm happy with it. And I was. So I took the washi tape off and then I cut it from the board. And there it is, they're finished. Some paintings just seem to flow off the brush. There's no struggle and painting it is a pleasure. And this was one of those paintings. I don't know whether it was the mood that I was in or whether it was the thinking that took place before I started painting. Who knows? I wish all paintings were as pleasing as this one. I hope you enjoyed watching. Please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you again next week. If you've been watching my videos, you know that I'll try. Is that any better? What do you want me to do? Do you want me to go again? <coughs> blah, blah, blah. And edges. In this class, Gabriel walks you through some uff. Is that awkward? I need a drink. Thank you.